Foreign Minister, thank you very much for giving us some time. Um, you've spent three days here at the Third New York Forum. I'm curious what some of your main impressions have been from this meeting. Uh, first, I must say that um, this uh, third edition of the New York Forum Africa um, had something quite special. It, 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 I've attended all three. Mm -hmm. And what is uh, different and, and better from this third edition um, is, is both the atmosphere but also the depth in terms of uh, debate and discussion. I thought this uh, edition of the three was the best. Okay. Um, the takeaway um, for the entire uh, forum this time around, I think is um, the more uh, I exchanged with people over the last three days, the more I was uh, convinced that there is a new energy in Africa. And it's mostly with young people, mostly with entrepreneurs, but also with um, uh, some of the companies that uh, were here uh, who seem to have much more confidence in, in us as a continent. Um, that, that came out very clearly. I was very impressed with the African um, innovators and inventors uh, who were um, showcased today. I thought, you know, this must be happening at a much larger scale across the continent. So I really thought this third edition was quite good. Yeah, I saw you tweeted about that. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, you know, um, you, you say you see this new confidence, this new feeling. I know you spoke earlier today about the importance of Africa telling its own stories. Mm. Um, how is that going to happen? Um, is it something that just has to emerge organically or is it something that can be a more concerted effort? I think it has to be for Africa to really tell its story, uh, which I'm very personally passionate about. Um, we have to be conscious uh, of the fact that if we don't, somebody else would define us and somebody else would tell our story. And this does not mean at all excluding other voices on Africa, but it, it's not normal to me that most of the important things happening on the continent are either absent from the global narrative or are given by others with their own twist. So we are, by and large, as a continent, absent from the, um, the discussions and the narrative on Africa. It's very important because um, we are in a world today where we have to be present, where we have to be relevant, where we, we have to sell our countries, where we have to sell our values and, and our culture, uh, where we do business. And part of doing business is, is also advertising. It, it's also um, um, showing what you are worth. And I think as a continent, this is an aspect we have to give much more attention. And do you think that's going to come about by just more African voices um, sort of being present and being active, uh, you know, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on other media, um, you know, various forms of communication, or is there some way to uh, you know, encourage that in an active way? There is no question in my mind that um, we have to be out there. We Africans uh, must make sure that we are um, visible, we are heard that um, Africa is presented um, objectively. Uh, I, I don't believe in embellishing and, and spinning, but I believe in, in an honest discussion, an honest description of what is happening in Africa. For every piece of bad news on, on this continent, um, there are a hundred uh, very good stories. So that balance has been missing, and I think um, again, it's affecting our business, it's affecting tourism in Africa, it's affecting um, our stand uh, on the global scene. So it has to be a conscious effort. Right. There's one other thing I wanted to raise before you have to go, and that is um, we heard a lot of talk, particularly in these closing sessions, about the importance of empowering women um, as part of the transformation of Africa. And I know that Rwanda, I think, has more women legislators as a percentage mm -hmm. than any other country in the world. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, how has your country sort of reach that point of having fantastic representation of women when you know many African countries that's still you know there's a, a, a large gap to close mm. from, from um, uh, the experience of, of my country Rwanda um, I am convinced that the long journey uh, that is development that many of our countries have to travel um, will go much faster with maximum um, energy and involvement of women. There is no question about it. Um, what, what has happened in Rwanda in this uh, reconstruction effort, uh, which was an immense task, is that women have given it um, all they have. Right. And they have uh, contributed to transforming uh, the country. So. Again, somebody talked uh, this afternoon about um, simple mathematics, that you don't exclude half of your population. It, it, it is also the feeling in Rwanda, but it's also for us in terms of policy as a country, it is about putting right that which has been wrong for so many years. But what has happened in, in practical terms is that the more women got involved, uh, the more they delivered and the more society, uh, men in particular, uh, realize that uh, there has to be space for women and women need to be encouraged. So, and yes, uh, uh, Rwanda's parliament is 63% women. Okay. Um, we have uh, women at, at different levels of, of uh, decision making in politics, in business. But I'm particularly impressed with the women in our villages uh -huh. that have uh, brought about the serious transformation we see across the country, beyond the capital and beyond the ministers and members right. of parliament and, and so forth. They work very hard. They care about uh, their families. They have uh, contributed to uh, unifying our society. They are delivering the Millennium Development Goals uh, for Rwanda. So it's, it, it, there is no other way uh, but to involve women for our countries to advance. Well, it's, it's wonderful to hear about that. Thank you very much. Thank you.